update. Um, I will call to order the meeting of the May 19th, 2020 Development Review Waiver Development Waiver Review Committee. <coughs> um, if you have any audible devices, um, please turn those off right now. Um, I will start by introducing all the members of the board. I am Ann Lippman. I am the Community Development Director and the Chairperson chairperson of this board. To my right is George Jones, who is the DOT director. To my immediate left is Bruce Coyle, who is the county engineer. And to the far left is Frank Baker, the county administrator. First item on our agenda is to review the minutes from the February 18th, 2020 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at these? And if so, do we have any motions? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Baker to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second from Mr. Jones. Um, any questions about the minutes? If not, I will call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the minutes of the February 18th, 2020 meeting are approved unanimously. Our first agenda item, and I'd just like to welcome everybody back to the Board of Commissioners meeting room. Um, this meeting was initially scheduled for March, and um, this is actually the first public meeting, or public meeting open to the public. So welcome back to our Board of Commissioners meeting room. Our agenda item today is case number 2020-04-W, application by Gaskin Surveying Company, Inc., on approximately... 28 tenths of acres requesting to reduce the Paulding County stormwater management pond access width from 25 feet to a varying width being no less than 18.59 feet. This is development regulation section 8.2.5. In order to remove a side setback encroachment for lot M81 of Seven Hills subdivision unit M phase three, property is located in land lot 697 and 672. District Three, section three on the north side of Cobblestone Trail and west of Grassmere Court, the address being 297 Cobblestone Trail, and it's located in post four. Um, is the applicant present? If you'd like to approach the podium and please address all of your comments to me as the chairperson. Um, I'm here, uh, Chris Evans from Gaskins. Uh, I'm representing the property owner, Ms. Jennifer Jones, who's sitting in the back as well. Um, what we're asking for is similar to what you said, a variance in the width of the, uh, the access to the property. Um, there's also on uh, street address 273 Cobblestone Trail, there's a storm drain easement um, that's, I believe, about 10 feet onto that property, which would add a little bit of width to the access, um, even though it's not for access, it is for storm drain so that it can double up for some of that. Um, what what the what created, uh, that's, that's the lot to the left of the access easement if you're looking at it from the road. Uh, what created this issue was uh, Gaskin started on this project back in the early 2000s uh, and uh, the the M2 phase was not completed, and when we got around to completing that, we had to add in the detention pond. So unfortunately for us, lesson learned, hardly, uh, we, we had some old files that our staff found and went out and started marking property corners, which did not reflect any access to the pond. So unfortunately, some of these houses, there's about three or four houses that got built in here and missed, uh, Ms. Johnson's was the one that kind of got impacted the worst of this whole situation. Um, fortunately, the rest of them worked out, uh, or we were, did a little few revisions and made them work out. Uh, but this is one of the things that we're trying to do to accommodate and, and give her a better situation for what she was expecting when she bought the house. Okay. Um, Thank you for a minute. If you want to hold on. Um, yes, ma'am. Is there anyone who would like to speak on behalf of this application? present okay if there's no one here to speak on behalf is there anyone wishing to express opposition or have questions or concern regarding this application okay if not um, are there any questions from the fellow board members I have a comment on you know from Bruce, Bruce Cole County in here Yes, sir. Um, I, I 
do need, and I understand the subdivision is still under warranty with uh, the maintenance bond expiring in October. Yes, sir. And then I think people are working with my staff to get this treatment itself fully accepted. Um, uh, I've had crews inspect the site and noted that uh, the fence needs repair that's in there. You still got a little bit of erosion. Um, and once you get to the rear of that site, you wind up into this boulder field you may not could drive a vehicle maintenance on and we would like road improve. You know, staying in the 18 foot we would like that road improved all the way down to the dam access is all I'm asking. I've got no objection if you'll fix that road to the dam access and your fence. Yes, sir. I, I spoke to uh, Four Star actually today who, who's responsible for this work. They were actually talking about uh, topping out the road. I believe they had done that and it, it actually failed. They did it when it was too cold, the, the paved road. Uh, but they were actually talking about providing access to the pond uh, cleaning out the pond, uh, getting it to design specs and everything. So, yeah. I think that's sure. I think that's uh, it's kind of underway. They've asked me to go do some survey work so that they could uh, figure out how much they need to do to get the pond back where it should be. And did you pick up those big rocks out front? Are they on part of the easement, or are they off on the? I, I think there's I think there's. Uh, one big, big rock, two big. I think there might be three. We're, we're aware of those, yes, sir. And a tree. Are they going to interfere with a tractor or maintenance? If they do, I think they're going to get them removed. Yes, sir. And, you know, you've got big rocks on a tree. Is that tree on the easement, or did you pick it up? I think the tree's in the easement as well, yes, sir. I mean, we try to go in to maintain things and not tear everything up. You know, it looks like, you know, with permission, we could bring our tracker around that and not disturb it. But overall, they appear to be right there with interference if we had to stay in that narrow corridor. As a general rule, does the tractors, are they rubber tired or would they be tracked? What? Um, Generally, it's a small track. It's called a mini X, or we do have rubber tire. But most of our repair work's done with it. It's a miniature backhoe with generally rubber tracks on it for walking on pavement. And you're more familiar with some of those crews. We generally we try not to make a big a mess. We try to walk in and walk out carefully. The rocks, the rocks are almost dead center of the highway and the tree is to the right across the region. Yeah. No, I don't, I can't remember exact footage, but the, I don't, you know, I don't know whether or not, and, and I don't know if it makes any difference, whether the, <clears throat> there's enough room to go around the rock on either side without being on somebody else's property. The question is, does that bother y'all? Well, generally, if we, you're the homeowner, the I'm, I'm here for moral support. <laughs> this is my daughter. This is her first purchase yeah. of home, and it's been a learning experience, to say the least. Generally, we try not to take things out. We do knock on your door and say, our easement's over here. Can we drive over here on your grass? And uh, I mean, uh, that way we don't have to disturb anything. Most most people are neighborly, and and we get in and out and clean up behind ourselves. Otherwise, we'd have to sort of shove the rocks and tree out of the way. Yeah, I, I think probably. I mean, look, I, I, this like I say, I'm here for moral support, but I think that you would have to be the one to determine whether or not you've got enough room. Now, personally, I told Jennifer that I didn't think that if you used a rubber tire and went around it or something like that, it would do much damage, especially after the sod got yeah. set in and everything. Agreed. And 
but you wouldn't be able to go out there and pick up the rock and move it without some heavy equipment because those are big stones. Right. I'm, I'm so, done. were you there today? Yeah. Yeah. there today. She's asking Bruce if you were on site today. Uh, no, I had I had personnel on site okay. inspect. Oh, okay. so they they lost. I'm yeah. sure they lost. Yeah. Yeah. But they they felt they could drive equipment around it. Do we would have to determine which side because of the sprinkler situation. Uh, I understand. Because where they will put it to begin with. Yeah, but if his people four star are going to be there, they might could reshift that landscape where it would be to your benefit. Before we move on, could we just get your names? I think we can dispense with you coming up to the podium, but could you just give um, um, your names so we can put them in the record correctly? <laughs> could y'all hear him? Yeah. Could you? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions? I guess just more of a comment. Again, you know, this is in development regulations. We actually have this as a 25-foot pathway to get to here. So we don't get into somebody's lawn and we don't get into somebody's sprinkler system. So when we do um, deviate from that minimum, for the most part, like the, Mr. Quill was saying, we bring small equipment. We never know. We may have something come up. We have to bring in a large piece of equipment at some point in time. So when the full area is not available, We've dropped it down to 18 feet, and then you drop it down even more because you've got rocks and stones in the middle there. It just makes it more difficult on us, and we're going to have to have either, you know, cooperation from from y'all, current property owners, and whoever else may be there in the future. So that just adds a little bit more of a, a wrinkle in Sorry. in you know basically in our maintenance work and scheduling work. Exception that we have to put the gate at the front and the gate at the back for access and not lock those. So I think we all that you know we can come to an agreement of what needs how it needs to best be accessed without having to move so many items as well. Since everybody's been willing to work with us on that that piece. She she's been talking to Kathy about access. Anybody else have any questions? I'm good. Okay. Um, at this time, is anyone ready to uh, make a motion on this request? I'll make a motion. We approve the request. Okay. We have a motion to approve from Mr. Coyle. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second from Mr. Jones. Uh, any questions about the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the motion is approved unanimously. Um, so, thank you very much. Um, that is the only items of on our agenda today. I did fail to recognize two people, and now a third person stepped in. Um, we did have Jason Phillips, our county attorney, in the front. Um, we have Commission Chairman Dave Carmichael with us today. And this is Leah Wilson. She is new um, in the planning department. She is back in the back taking minutes for us. So this is her first meeting. So <laughs> excited to have you, Leah. So. Um, I don't think there is any other business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn for Mr. Baker. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Coyle. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>